Hi there. In this video we will be taking a look at this pair of uh, Russian made speakers. I think they equipped some Tento speakers for Kashtan, if I pronounce correctly, a uh, real player from back in the day. So let's get to it. These are big ish in diameter, if I remember correctly, they are 25 centimeters. Eh, <clears throat> my bad, 20. <laughs> Remembered wrong, so 20 centimeters. Uh, and as power handling goes, uh, they can take, uh, some say, about 20 watts, uh, watts maximum, others say about 10 watts, but 10 real watts, not uh, the PMPO or whatever uh, you put uh, hundreds of watts on uh, small speakers uh, type. So real watts. Uh, the coil is decently big, as you might be able to see also from this, uh, I think it's a pole piece, uh, center anyway. Uh, the motor assembly itself, quite big, big uh, thick plates, the magnet itself, uh, decent in size. I will put the the info of them about 11 centimeters in size the magnet itself. The info for for these uh, things I will show it uh, to you next and also put the link in the description. Hopefully it will remain on over the years. It's about one and a half inch the diameter so just below four centimeters. Camera please focus. So yeah. The diameter of the voice coil itself. Uh, I intend to use these two in uh, some speakers that uh, I bought without drivers in them. Hopefully they will work uh, right. We'll see about that. They might not fit that well and then I will move them to another project but hopefully they will fit. But for the purpose of this video we will just give them a quick test and a kind of DIY frequency response. It's not something measured. I'm not going to give you an SPL for them or uh, who knows what parameters. Nope, uh, I'm not set up for that. I just want a, a bit of an idea uh, of the frequency response and see if they still somewhat match uh, the catalog when they were built a thousand years ago. <laughs> I think about 50 years, if not a bit more in reality. The the foam uh, the edge the surround itself is rubber so uh, it did not rot it will not rot cardboard basically compressed paper this is uh, impregnated cloth and uh, yes the spider is kind of the standard type also this does not seem to be affected by time so it's still uh, soft I've seen old speakers with a really brittle one no, not the case here so. This should be able to still move uh, fairly well. It also has this integrated uh, ceiling uh, rubber all around it. So I think they mostly were made to come from the back into the hall, I think, because otherwise why you, would you put this on the front and not on the back? But somebody cut kind of a ceiling rubber from something, probably, um, I don't know, all the car, um, not tire, the camera inside of the tire. Anyway, so without further ado, let's give them a quick play through some songs and then a frequency response. And at the end of the video, a bit of uh, an excursion test, but not pushing them. I don't want to burn them even before putting them in some boxes. Overall, quite sturdy construction. Uh, I Maybe I wished these were a bit thicker and maybe with some reinforcement. As you can see, only four of them and quite thin. And this is a heavy magnet. And I've heard, uh, I've actually read online of uh, cases where this cracked. The housing cracked because of uh, defects from uh, manufacture and whatnot. So, but yeah, they are not 100% uh, bulletproof, but yep, good enough, sturdy enough. They are here, they are playing 40 years later, 
playing normally without any issues whatsoever and I have a few Romanian ones that went bad so it seems they made stuff a bit uh, better than Romanians still not uh, any importance of the look of it seeing from the glue residue all over who cares how they look if they work it's good enough but uh, yeah somehow I think that's the appeal of them for me I could buy uh, French German who knows what uh, other speakers uh, that also looked good but these are made to last so yeah there's that these uh, are the info of the speaker this is the name 10GD-30B similar to this one they are about the same thing so in theory 20 watts 45 max 8 ohms and uh, the uh, from 62 63 to and from 63 to 5000 hertz this one below is uh, another speaker that was equipping uh, a set of uh, stereo speakers obviously so another driver the high frequency but we are interested in a low frequency so uh, weirdly enough this doesn't go extremely low but uh, yeah Let's continue this and see what we hear and what we can uh, record with the mic on my mobile phone. Kind of forgot to show you the info. So they are 8 ohms and they are from 1984. So 40 years ago. And this should be a 10. And uh, yeah, right this uh, at the front. In theory, in Soviet speakers, the first... Uh, uh, two numbers show you the power handling in watts but from what I find online this seem to be 20 watts although that should be a 10 so I don't know and old Soviet uh, marking on them let's give this a quick play and see how it sounds I've got no clue I haven't heard them up until now okay I mostly have two songs that I test speakers on just so I can compare speakers between them. I do about the same tests on all of them, but the, yeah, they are not really comparable to other videos on YouTube that you will see, but mine between them will be comparable. So yeah, this is first one. So let's give it a try. Not in a really high volume because I don't want to destroy this. The amp can output way more than this can handle, I think. say up until now I like what I hear compared to other speakers I do like what I hear let's give it the second one which is actually mostly for uh, paper uh, surround speakers will not be quite suited for this one but anyway let's give it a bell the second uh, song that I test with is this one
and yes, obviously these are all subjective tests that I'm doing. This is not as crisp as I've heard other uh, old speakers with uh, paper surround sound. Those were crisper, but obviously this will handle bass much better because it is kind of a bass speaker and a bit of mids. So now let's give it a quick uh, uh, test with a little app. I'll give that to you in a moment when I find it. I haven't used it uh, in a while. This is the app. It's called Audio Tool. And as you can see, it can make a graph with the frequency response of what it uh, records through the mic. And it can also do a sign sweep. So I'm going to give it a sign sweep uh, up to 20,000 Hertz and see, yeah, this will not go that high. I'm 99% sure it's impossible for it to go that high, but whatever. And see what we get in the end. This is basically, it seems, the graph of my voice. Hmm. It's an approximation. Again, you can only compare speakers between my videos. But for me, it gives me an idea of what a particular speaker can do for my projects. So, uh, yeah, I kind of need to go to... to, 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 to uh, I haven't used this for a while. So I think this, uh, if I get on pick on, I delete the graph basically. But I'm going to do that only when using, um, where is it? Sign sweep. Or a sweep actually, it doesn't have a sign sweep. Yeah, I think this is what I used last time. Come on. Hey, are you? So 30 to 20,000 uh, in 15 seconds. No, actually the test needs to be done with a logarithmic sweep. Otherwise, uh, we will not get the results similar to what I was getting uh, in my previous tests on other speakers. Okay, I'm remeasuring uh, in this position because it seems that in my current location, having the speaker close to the wall interferes with uh, the results too much. So I am changing uh, for this location and all speakers will be measured like this. This is at the end of my mat. This is at the beginning of my mat, pointing towards it. And uh, that's about it. Let's see what we get. And this is what we are getting. So basically from here up to here, meaning about from 125 to 8K, this is relatively flat in free air in my DIY stupid conditions. All my speakers will be tested like this. So it's basically for comparing speakers between them, not for getting real uh, data, but it gives me an idea of what a speaker does. For example, if I would put a mid-range, it would uh, go kind of low up until here and only from here start to go up. So yeah, I get an idea of what happens here. This one rises fairly quickly. Not extremely quick. I've seen uh, others go quicker in here, but uh, yeah, decently quick. So, okay-ish. I, I kind of believe the, the info, but the membrane could still be a bit stiff. And it could rise a bit quicker if it's being played uh, for a while to make the membrane a bit looser again. And uh, yeah, okay, happy with what I see here. I've seen really bad dips in other speaker. Uh, this one has a dip a bit here, but uh, not dramatical, I think, from what I've seen in others.
tested also the second speaker about the same as the first. Hmm. You know what? There is a possibility, a slight possibility that the suspension and the spider are actually stiff from not being played for a really long while. I do have a feeling that this one now is moving a bit easier than this. Let me see, one of them actually had a softer rubber. No, this is the one with the softer rubber from the factory. I think it's, yeah, Russian stuff was made uh, not that uh, perfect. It was made to last, but not that perfect. So this has a bit of a, of a thinner suspension on it. But anyway, so to my hearing, subjective, fully 100% subjective, they do produce bass, but you would expect a bit more. So they kind of need to to be cranked up to start uh, producing proper bass, but they are only 20 watts. So cranking up only goes that far, not uh, too much uh, legroom. Camera focus on whatever I want, not, not on whatever you want. So um, yeah, I will obviously put them in the, that box and see how they sound. Uh, I was expecting a bit more punch, but then again could be to my different recording location from other speakers, but other speakers uh, were having a bit more bass, even ones uh, you wouldn't expect to have. So who knows, we'll see what, uh, what we get. But overall, both of them are working perfectly, that's a big plus for the moment. I think my... I have some accus put on charge right here, so they might be creating a bit of noise in the background at the moment. Hopefully the phone will not pick it up. I like them. They do feel a bit uh, powerful, but not that much. But for a room, it's enough if you don't want to throw a party from, from what I can figure out until now. But we'll see when they are in a box. Overall, I'm glad I have them and I was able to to play around uh, for a moment with them and uh, the saga continues. So if you have any more info about these particular speakers, how they sounded in the original box, because I have never heard them or seen in person the original box only in pictures, the boxes, the speakers, the whatever you want to call them, enclosures, uh, tell us in the comments. So uh, yeah, that's about it for this video. and. Uh, Next I will make a video for these little guys, which uh, weirdly enough are I think uh, able to handle uh, the same about 20 watts camera. Ah, I forced focus on something else so now you don't want to. Yeah, I know. And they are much smaller so they will be used in parallel which is kind of weird if you think about it, but hey, I didn't make the the voice coin myself to decide which of them and how much we'll be able to handle. So this separate video in the description. And yeah, that's about it. See you in the next one.